Working on a 2014 Chevy Cruze. Uh, it's a 1.4 turbo engine. Uh, customer states it's got a check engine light. So uh, let's get into it, scan it, figure out what that check engine light is and go from there. So we got a PO 420 uh, catalyst system low efficiency and this is a four cylinder so it's only got bank one. V6 or V8 would have a bank one and bank two. So let's go back and look and see if we can't watch those sensors that monitor that. Go to a custom. Deselect all. We're gonna go. We want to pull up oxygen sensor. So, oxygen sensor one and oxygen sensor two. And we're gonna graph those. All right. The way the catalytic converter works, or the way the oxygen sensors work is you've got oxygen sensor one and oxygen sensor two. Oxygen sensor one is the one coming right out of the engine, right out of the exhaust manifold. And that's telling the computer what the fuel trims and the fuel air, uh, air fuel mixture is of the engine right now. That's what's coming out of the exhaust manifold. Oxygen sensor two is the same style of oxygen sensor but it is after the catalytic converter and it's showing that the converter is doing its job. A catalytic converter is essentially just an oxygen sensor, an oxygen uh, storage component as far as the oxygen sensor is concerned. So if a catalytic converter is doing what it's supposed to be doing and it's in good health, uh, the oxygen coming out of the catalytic converter read, read by the oxygen sensor number two will be a steady, uh, basically a steady line around 0.6 volts. You know, 0.6 to 0.7 is usually pretty good. So you can see on oxygen sensor two here, it is, it's kind of bouncing between 0.6 and 0.8 which isn't horrible, that's not enough to cause the uh, an oxygen sensor or a uh, catalytic converter efficiency code, but this is just that idle. So uh, when you bring the uh, flow and the volume through that catalytic converter, if it can't maintain that 0.6 uh, steady graph, um, it'll set that code. So let me step on the gas a little bit. I'm going to bring the RPMs up and you're going to probably see You're going to see that O2, uh, O2 sensor number two get real active. Yep, so you can see that. It's not able to maintain that steady graph. And it'll get worse if I was actually driving it. This is just bringing the RPMs up with no load. So a, a strong, healthy catalytic converter would be able to maintain that steady voltage uh, uh, throughout most conditions, acceleration conditions. But now, if I let's say I, I'm kind of fluctuating the gas like this, the accelerator. See what happens to that that O2 number two? It's basically mimicking O2 sensor number one, which tells the computer that the catalytic converter is not doing its job. So this one is going to require a catalytic converter to, uh, to fix their problem. But you have to ask yourself, uh, what caused the catalytic converter to go bad? So that's, uh, that's something we need to uh, investigate before we sell her an expensive catalytic converter. 
All right, before we leave here, let's go back out and look. I don't want to look at, uh, so let's look at misfire data real fast. I don't think we're going to have any misfire. It runs real smooth, so. So you can see there's no currents, and if you look in the histories, there's no history. Um, but it doesn't take much of a misfire to to cause catalytic converters to to get damaged, um, and it could only be misfiring if, uh, under certain conditions. Super hot, you know, under load, pulling up a hill. We have a lot of hills in this area, so everybody's always driving up or down hills. So uh, could be happening intermittently then. Um, but all the misfire data looks real good. Let's look at fuel trims. I want to see if it's compensating for it running leaner rich. So that should be under engine data. Um, go back to custom, deselect. Here we go. Short term and long term. So yeah, that's real clean. Negative three on the long term, which is good, and negative three on the short term. Yeah, so the, it's not really got any fuel trim problems. We bring the RPMs up a little bit. It's still right where we want it to be. Certainly not enough to cause a problem with a catalytic converter. Let's take a look at those spark plugs and, uh, and go from there. So we know the catalytic converter is faulty. The catalytic converter for a lot of these uh, modern cars, they're upwards of $2,000. We need to figure out what is causing that catalytic converter to fail. Uh, it's got 111,000 miles on the car, uh, not a ton of miles, uh, certainly a catalytic converter should last longer than that. So we're going to uh, investigate a little bit. There's no misfires. Misfires will damage a catalytic converter really fast. Uh, ox uh, coolant uh, contamination will cause it to, to damage really fast. Um, but now with 111,000 miles, this thing should have already had at least one spark plug change. So um, that's likely what the... Um, problem for uh, the catalytic converter failure is uh, but that's a quick check we're gonna pull some spark plugs and make sure that the uh, spark plugs are not original uh, make sure the coil boots are uh, clean and not uh, oil contaminated or have uh, um, leaks in them to where they can cross fire so uh, we're gonna get a little bit more investigation on this thing and uh, figure out why her catalytic converter failed And this is what I was afraid of. If you look here, ah, this is really hot. If you look here, there's oil on the coil boot right there. Pretty common. And what that can do is it can get in there and crossfire, crossfire those plugs, get create some uh, some misfires. It doesn't take many misfires for it to uh, create a problem. Let's pull a couple spark plugs and see what we see here. things are freaking hot okay so this is an original spark plug they're not in horrible condition but the concern is that there's 111,000 miles on them and they should have already been changed
Oh, and look at this one here. You can see this one's got oil puddled in the, into the, so that's oil right there. So that's indication enough that we're going to do a, we're going to replace this valve cover. So there's evidence of oil on the boots and there's oil on the spark plug porcelain, but there's no evidence of any oil in the valve cover valley here. Uh, this is probably a new valve cover. There was a, a technical service bulletin on this val uh, valve cover for the PCV system leaking. More than likely it had a leaking valve cover and they've already replaced it, which fixed their oil leak. Uh, but they didn't clean off the coils uh, and the spark plugs, uh, which which happens. Guys get in a hurry, so they forget that kind of stuff. But uh, I suspect that the oil leak that caused the contamination on the boots and the plugs uh, has already been taken care of. So I think we're going to recommend new spark plugs, new coil boots uh, before she does a catalytic converter. So these have uh, uh, some oil consumption issues that uh, could also cause catalytic converter damage. Um, the rings are, are, have, mark, uh, have made markings on the uh, cylinder walls on some of these engines. Uh, it's a fairly common issue. There's a TSB out for it. Uh, don't believe that's our problem. I just called the customer and she said that she's never had to add oil and had her oil changed about a thousand miles ago and it was, uh, uh, apparently it was, uh, uh, wasn't low at that time. So. Uh, I suspect our problem is the spark plugs and the coils, coil boots, um, and then uh, we, we can do that and then sell her the uh, catalytic converter.